never done one of these before, as you'll probably be able to tell. Today I'm going to try and show you how to fit an old fashioned, slightly, but gorgeous looking and actually quite good Zalman processor cooler, the CNPS 9900 Max, onto a modern AM4 socket motherboard. It's actually a lot easier than you might think when you take this out of its case and you see all the package of bits and pieces that come with it and you think, Shit, how the f*** are we going to fit this? Apologies for the language. It's quite easy. Right, the motherboard we've chosen is uh, kind of irrelevant, but it's an ASRock B450M Pro 4X Micro ATX board. And as you can see, I've fitted the processor already. First of all, you've got to remove the original mounts. These four screws here and here. Just take these out, you're probably not going to need them again. Place them to one side. Carefully lifting the motherboard, observing all static precautions, of course. Remove the old backplate. Again, probably not going to need that anymore. Take your new backplate with the AM4 Zalman fitting kit, which of course you're going to need. Just place that so that the holes mounts come through the holes. Now, you need the four binding posts, which are supplied in the Zalman fitting kit. Just hand screw those in. You don't need to tighten them up, I don't think, with a set of pliers. Just tighten them up as pretty much as tight as you can with your fingers. That should be adequate. Right, move the board out of the way. Now, we need to fit these to the actual cooler. They have a sharp edge on one side and a not so sharp edge on the other side. Sharp edge needs to be facing downwards. First of all, these four screws. You need to slacken them off, but don't take them out completely. Let's try and move the camera up and see what happens. There we go. Just slacken them off a few turns each. Should be enough. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see. There's now a gap here, and you need to slide this into the gap. Making sure you first slacken them off sufficiently. If you haven't, like I haven't, undo a couple more turns. Again, you don't want the screws to come out. So remember, sharp edge facing downwards. That should fit in there now. Once that's in, just tighten the screws up a little bit. Not tight. Do them a bit by bit. You need to get it so that when you tighten it up, there is no gap top or bottom.
Again, actually don't do them tight until you fit the one on the other side, which I forgot about. I'll just slacken those off a bit more because I didn't do it enough the first time. In it goes. If you're not careful, it is possible to push this in a little bit too far so that, one moment. Right, whoops. Try and keep that pressed in as you go. Just tighten them up gently to begin with. Ah, this is what you've got to be careful of. I don't know if you can see in there. There's a gap. There shouldn't be a gap down there. That means it's not seated properly. Just slacken them off just a little bit. And try again. Again, make sure they're both pressed nicely in as far as they'll go. Yeah, now we see no gap in there. Hopefully you can see that, and no gap in there. Tighten them up fully, as they were to begin with. And just have a quick last check, make sure no gap that side or that side. Right, that job is now done. What you'll hopefully be able to see now is that you just simply place this the white way round. The holes line up beautifully with the posts and you're kind of ready to go. Don't forget to put your heat paste on there, not too much, and you're ready to go. Using the other four screws that the Zalman fitting kit supplies you with, which are unfortunately hex heads, but it does mean that they're slightly easier to get to with the supplied Allen key. Job done. I suppose I ought to finish the job off properly by showing you how to put these bloody screws in. This tool is not magnetised, so this is probably the most fiddly part of the whole bleeding job, fitting these in with your large fat fingers and then tightening them up. Might be an idea at this point to show you how much heat paste to use? The answer is not a lot. I'm going to use this stuff from a rival brand in fact, but there we go. Came with another cooler. You don't need to spread it all over. The heat sink will spread it. Best to just push out. I would say on a process of this size, no more than the size of a small, I don't know, half a pea. Yeah. Take your processor and try and place it on there flat. As you tighten up the screws that you're going to put in place, it will naturally spread out on its own.
and I said this is the most annoying fiddly part of the whole job especially when your own fingers are getting in the way and you can't see what you're doing You tighten those up as much as you can. Strictly speaking, these should be tightened evenly. final tweak with these. Incidentally there's no point getting hold of the very far end, putting a huge amount of leverage on and stripping the thread. No need for that, it's just got to hold the cooler in place. job is now done. Make sure the cable doesn't foul the fan when you plug it in and you're pretty much good to go. Thanks for watching.